Hi. On this date, it was two years ago since I first watched the show Soy Luna. And the only reason I remember the date is because I live blogged about it uh, when I first watched it. And now when it's the second anniversary, I thought it could be fun to do something. So I decided why not review the first episode? At first I thought that maybe I should make a review about Todo Igual season 2 because that season has just come out. But I don't know if I want to talk about season 2 of that show because I feel very disturbed after what I witnessed. To explain it, we can use something that would fit the theme of today's video. When I watched To the Igual season 2, I felt like amber spinning around in this Soluna animation I found. You have no idea how much I've laughed about that for the past days. <laughs> Check them out, please. Before we start reviewing the episode, I just want to explain my history with Soy Luna because it's a bit complicated. You see, when I was a preteen, my favorite show in the world was Violetta. I lived, breathed, ate, drank, and dreamed about Violetta. And by the way, now in October, um, it's going to be 10 years since since Violetta first aired in Scandinavia. If you don't know, Violetta came out in 2012, but it didn't air until October 2013 in Scandinavia because we get everything late. And yes, this meant that I spoiled myself of everything that was going to happen in later seasons. But anyway, and when the Scandinavian 10 year anniversary comes, I will probably review the first episode of Violetta 2, but now back to Soy Luna. When Soy Luna came out, I was kind of in a I'm too old for Disney Channel kind of uh, face. Also, I thought it looked really childish. It looked like it was made for preschoolers, which arguably Violetta also was marketed like it was for preschoolers, but if you watch Violetta, you know for a fact it's not for preschool age kids. And Soy Luna arguably is not either, but I didn't know that at the time. Also, through the years, people who watched Soy Luna were really an anti-Violetta. They were really like, uh, Violetta sucks so much. Seluna is way better than Violetta. Violetta sucks in so many ways. And I got offended <laughs> at Violetta's behalf. That I was like, okay, if you act like that, then I'm never gonna watch your shitty show. And then one night, September 26, 2021, I sat down in front of Disney Plus and I said to myself, all right, let's check out this shitty show. <laughs> and I proceeded to watch three episodes in one night. And after this, I went online and I wrote, I have watched three episodes of Soy Luna. Jim and Jam are girlfriends, right? Now, it took me a while to actually get into the show. I think that I didn't really find it that fun to watch until like episode 30, the first time I watched it. But something that early season one of Violetta had talked to me is that you have to have patience. So I kept on watching and I had patience. And after watching more and more, I realized that this show is not so bad. Anyway, I think it's time to start to review the very first episode of Soy Luna. The episode starts with our main character, or hero, you can call it, Luna. She's skating around a darkly little rink. She skates around quite a lot, and then she suddenly loses her pendant, and she wakes up, because apparently this was just a dream. Her mom comes in and tells her that she's late for work. But all Luna can care about is her amazing dream. Also, 
You may notice that her room has a lot of roller skate themed posters and stuff. And this is because Luna doesn't only love roller skates, she has a hyper fixation for roller skates, as we will find out when watching more of this show. She cannot function if she does not get to roller skates. But anyway, she puts on her roller skates and she skates off to work. We then cut to a car with three people in it. Sharon Benson, her assistant Ray and her goddaughter in quotations Amber. All three of them are on their phones. Sharon is talking to someone about the new vacation house here in Cancun that she's going to buy. I forgot to mention they are currently in Cancun in Mexico. Ray is on the phone with their cook because apparently their cook is threatening to quit because a certain someone is very picky with the food. And that certain someone is Amber. She is currently on her phone with her boyfriend, or rather, she tries to call him, but he doesn't reply. Sharon, Ray and Amber arrive at the mansion, and they are greeted by Miguel, who is Luna's dad, and he also works in this mansion. So does Luna's mom, Monica, who is the chef of the mansion. Sharon asks if Monica can make a lobster for her, since she has heard so much about her great cooking, and Monica says, okay, I can make a lobster. Luna arrives at work, and here we get to meet Simon, who is her best friend. Everything about Simon gets established immediately. Especially when the boss comes and to scold Luna for being late, and he just mimics her in the background. Simon is a funky dude. He loves to have fun, and he loves to hang out with Luna, and he has this like bro attitude about everything. We also find out that he can play guitar. Anyway, I think we get a pretty clear picture about the kind of person that Simon is. We then cut to Buenos Aires uh, at this place called Jam and Roller. The two workers, Nico and Pedro, are looking for a rink assistant, but they haven't found anyone yet. Um, Anyway, we also meet Jasmine and Delphi. They are two girls who have a YouTube channel, and they are friends with Ambar, and they plan on calling her while recording a video. Ambar is by the pool in Cancun, and she, as you get a call from them, and her boyfriend Matteo was supposed to be there too, but he has still not picked up when she has tried to call him. So when they record this video, they have to improvise a bit why he's not there. Also, shout out to the man in the background. I am not sure if this was a paid extra or just some dude who just walked while they were recording, but I like him. Monica and Miguel are in the kitchen when Monica is making the lobster, and she's like, I don't like that, Sharon. Which is so funny, because Sharon has been nothing but nice to them this far. And Amber, on the other hand, as we will see later in this episode, is kind of a brat, uh, but they don't really feel that about her. And I think it's because Monica and Miguel, they are first of all very good parents, but they are also very good at sensing what people to trust and what people to not trust. So Sharon can be very nice to them and they can see that something ain't right. And they can see Amber being a total brat and like not really dislike her for it. And you just see that there is goodness in her. She's just acting out. Also, Monica mentions that she's worried about Luna because apparently Luna's out all day with roller skates with her, like her delinquent friends. And I don't know, we don't really get to see Luna's friends in Cancun besides Simon. And like he's the opposite of like a delinquent bad boy. I'm picturing Luna's friends as like On the one hand, she has Simon, which is like the most cutest, nicest, friendliest boy ever. And on the other hand, all her other friends are like a gang (laughs) who like does small crimes like jaywalking and stealing candy from stores. Anyway, they serve the lobster and Sharon loves the lobster, but Amber immediately credits it. She doesn't want weird food like lobster. She wants hamburgers. 
So she just throws a fit and says that she thinks this food is gross. And Monica and Miguel are extremely chill about it. Monica's like, oh, should I make you sandwiches? Do you want something else? And Amber's like, no, I don't know. And Miguel says, oh, but we can order... We can order you something from Food Goodwills. Food Goodwills is the place that Luna works at. And Amber immediately gets decided and orders a big meal. Because Monica cooked such a good lobster, Sharon wants her Buenos Aires. They need a new cook anyway because their old cook quit. And Ray is like, I think we should make sure the cook can take God or his complete tantrums and abuse for more than one day. Which is like... They, didn't you see how they reacted when Ambar disliked the food? They clearly have handled picky eaters before. Later in the show, it's revealed that Luna used to be a picky eater too. And then Monica like cooked, uh, cooked such good meals that Luna stopped being a picky eater. And so I think she knows how to make Ambar eat her food too. She just needs some time. <laughs> But also abuse. Amber is 17, Ray. What kind of abuse are you talking about? Ray, for some reason, has decided that Amber is his biggest enemy, and it's so funny when like he's 40 and she's a teenage girl. Like, why has he decided that a teenage girl is his biggest threat in the universe, please? We then get a little snippet of Matteo, who's who's Amber's boyfriend, and uh, the reason he has not picked up is because he's out skating with his pals. And something I've noticed with several characters in this show is that they have horse helmets when they skate. And for some reason, I always react to this. Why do you have horse helmets when you roller skate? Anyway, he decides to skate in the middle of the street for some reason. And Luna bumps into him because she's out doing deliveries and she bumps into him and he's like ah watch where you're going and she's like i'm trying to deliver hamburgers you're in the way luna arrives at the mansion because she was the one who was going to deliver amber's food and matteo arrives right after her amber stands up to see him and luna accidentally bumps into her and spills milkshake on her Amber gets mad, of course, and feels embarrassed because Matteo also laughs. Luna apologizes, but Amber starts yelling at her, and so she goes, Well, it's not that big a deal, Julita. Amber is like, what the fuck is Julita? And Luna explains it means pretty here in Mexico. But Amber doesn't like girls calling her pretty, so she attempts to drown her. Matteo dives in to save her, and Miguel comes out to get Luna away. Ray also sees this and he alerts Sharon, especially because Luna is a stepdaughter, and like, if they find out that Amber tried to drown their daughter, maybe they don't want to accept her deal about coming with them to Buenos Aires. Amber is like, she tripped, it wasn't me, you weren't even there, Ray. And Ray is like, you must take action, Mrs. Benson. Your gutter is a hazard. And I, I feel like Amber has done something personal to Ray. Maybe she pushed him down the stairs or something, I don't know. Anyway, Luna is with her parents in the kitchen and they clean her up. And she discovers that her pendant is lost because she dropped it when she was pushed into the pool. This is when we also find out that Luna is adopted, and she had the pendant already when she got adopted by her parents. Anyway, Luna has to go back to work, and so Sharon offers to drive her. They talk for a bit, and Sharon asks her to forgive her daughter, because sometimes she can't control herself. And honestly, Sharon in the first episode is kind of portrays like she knows Amber can be a handful, but she also understands why she acts out, because they make us believe pretty early on that Amber's parents are working overseas, and that's why she stays with Sharon. And for me, at least a pretty big part of season one, I thought that Amber acted the way she did because of abandonment issues. But... Sharon, she becomes less and less pleasant the further the season goes. 
And as we will learn the further we watch this show, is that Amber may have acted like this due to other reasons. Because her whole thing with her parents working overseas is not maybe really the truth. Anyway, Luna also mentions that she does go to school but doesn't study as much as her parents want her to. So Sharon gets an idea. She goes to Monica and Miguel and she says that she wants them to work with her in Buenos Aires. They immediately decline, but she says that Luna can go to some fancy to the same fancy school that Amber goes to, one of the fanciest schools in the world. Also, I think Sharon interacts with Luna so much more in this episode than what she does for like the rest of the show. And honestly, that bothers me a little bit because during the course of the show, we learn that Sharon and Luna are um, closer than we initially are led to believe, which means which means that there are some moments that I kind of wish that they would like interact a bit more, especially in like the last episode of season three. I wish that Luna and Sharon had a talk in the last episode. They didn't talk in that episode, but we're not talking about the last episode of the show. We're talking about the first episode of the show, so let's move on. Monica and Miguel accept accept when they hear that their daughter will have a good education. And later they tell Luna this, uh, and Luna is immediately like, no, I don't want to leave. Luna meets Matteo again, and she calls him a strawberry. So in return, he calls her a delivery girl. Wow. Anyway, he also found her pendant, so that's nice. Luna also goes to the shore to meet Simone and talk about what her parents just told her. And he encourages her to let them accept the offer. And the two have a pretty sweet moment together. When Luna returns, she finds out that when her parents declined the offer, Sharon fired them. And so she's like, oh, okay, I don't want you getting fired. Of course we're going to Buenos Aires. Uh, And their parents are like, are you sure? And she's like, yeah. And so they accept the offer again. And so they're going to Buenos Aires. They arrive at night and Luna looks around at the big mansion. She and Amber are left alone, and Amber decides that they f- should forget everything that happened. They got a bit of a rough start, so like, let's forget anything, everything, because they will live together now, so they have to get along. Amber holds her hand out like this, and gets surprised when Luna shakes it. Like, did she expect her to like kiss her hand or something? <laughs> Question of the day. If Amber held out her hand like this, would you shake it, kiss it, or eat it? Eat her hand. (laughs) Luna also gets a phone, which apparently she did not have before, which I think is a bit weird, considering like her mom doesn't like her friends in Cancun apparently, so like I think that she'd want her to have a phone, but anyway, she has a phone now. Next day, she skates around looking at all the famous places of Buenos Aires and having a good time and she finds Jam and Roller. And going inside, she sees it's the same place from her dream. And that's where the episode ends. So this is a pretty solid first episode of a show. It establishes a lot of characters and sets up what eventually will come. I also have found that the viewing experience is different whether or not you have watched the show before, because if you re-watch the episode after having seen the full show, you notice things that you didn't really notice when you watched it and didn't know anything that was going to happen. There are a lot more episodes of Soy Luna and Violetta that I would like to talk about. I mean, I said in the beginning of the video that I would probably make a review of the first episode of Violetta uh, later this month. And and with Violetta alone, there are so many episodes there that I also would like to talk about. I mean, there's the season two 
the first episode of season two that I think is just superior in every way possible and episode and how episode 40 in season two is like the most has the most bisexual energy ever and how the Madrid arc is amazing the whole the whole season two of Violetta I love season two so much and in Son Luna there's also some episodes that I would like to talk about like how they romanticize the ending of a certain episodes that I can compare to the ending of a certain episode in Violetta some smaller arcs the way season two of Sir Luna ended so fucking weirdly. Like, I, I can't even describe it. You have to watch it to understand. I'd like to make an unhinged recap of, like, the whole shows. That would take a long time, but, like, it's 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 fun. <laughs> I'd like to make a whole video about the love story between Jim and Jam and when I think they started dating, because they did. I'd like to make a theory video, what I think would have happened if Angie told Violetta right away that she was her aunt. What had happened then? I'd also like to talk about the queer subtext in both of these shows and also in Bia. I have a harder time talking much about Bia because I have only watched that show once and that show is not out in my country. So it's hard for me to say much about it, but I think that if I rewatch Bia sometimes I may have some more things to say about that. But I did make a f- almost 50 minute analysis video about Bia where I compared it to Violetta and Soluna and what I thought about it and stuff. But there are lots of episodes and lots of storylines and all that kind of stuff that I would like to discuss with Violetta and Seduna. So hopefully I will make more videos either about certain episodes or certain storylines or like maybe certain characters or maybe certain ships, maybe certain non-canon ships and why I think they are dating even if canon says they aren't. But we will end the video here. I hope you like this little review and um, I hope that you are excited for more to come. Of all the potential videos I listed previously, I am not sure how many of those I will actually do. But I know that I for certain will review the first episode of Violetta later. I will try to do it this month, but if it doesn't happen this month, then I promise it will come eventually. Without further ado, here's Amber spinning around again in that animation. <laughs> okay, now. Nah. Thanks for watching, and uh, I see you guys next time. Bye bye.